Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, it's the final day of campaigning in Uganda as candidates in the upcoming presidential race rally their supporters for one final push before the big day on Thursday. Also, France 24 hears from the young woman allegedly gang raped in Chad. Her ordeal sparked protests in Jemina in which one person was killed. And we hear from the author of a rights report on support available to girls and women returning after having been kidnapped by Boko Haram in Nigeria. International Alert says that stigma and, stigma and ostracization adds to the troubles of women taken from their families by the insurgents. Well, first, the hopefuls in Uganda's presidential race marked the end of campaigning on Tuesday by holding huge rallies in Kampala. Thursday's vote is expected to be the toughest yet for longtime leader Yawari Museveni, who's been in power since 1986. Now, his top rival, Kizabisigye, is trying his luck for the top job for a fourth time. He said that he doesn't believe that the vote will be free or fair, but still hopes that he's in with a chance. Meanwhile, President Museveni himself pulled out all the stops for his supporters. Our correspondent Duncan Woodside was there. Up to 10,000 people gathered here at Kololo Airstrip in central Kampala to be addressed by Yari Museveni behind me here, the president of Uganda, uh, at what is the pinnacle of his campaign ahead of Thursday's presidential election. Now, his message was consistent with that delivered throughout the campaign. It's one of steady progress and continued investment in public services and infrastructure, a message which went down well with his supporters here. All he was emphasizing was that we should, we should vote and we vote the right person and we know he's the best. He promised to create jobs, he promised peace and stability and others. So people here in Kampala, the capital city, want peace. That's what we want. We want jobs, we have been unemployed. Pulling people from poverty, that has been the problem of Uganda. So he has a program. To, to uplift everybody from poverty. Museveni arrived at the campaign venue by helicopter, one of many illustrations of his campaign's superior resources. Meanwhile, the main opposition challenger, Kisa Besage, was able to resume his campaign on Tuesday. That was after he was arrested and tear gassed on Monday uh, as a result of his convoy allegedly deviating from a path which had been pre-agreed with the police. Uncle Woodside there for us in Kampala. Well, once again, the UN's faced with allegations of sexual abuse by peacekeepers in Central African Republic. Troops have been hit with numerous charges over the last year, and the world body has pledged to crack down on allegations of misconduct. The latest round of concerns are said to involve four troops, possibly from Democratic Republic of Congo. That's yet to be confirmed. Uh, US, UN sources, though, in the meantime, have reportedly indicated that some of the latest his allegations do concern minors. Kenya's athletics chief is to temporarily step aside whilst an investigation into bribery allegations moves forward. Last week, Isaac Mwangi dismissed the claims of Joy Sakari and Francesca Koki Manunga that he asked them for $24,000 each to reduce their four-year bans over failed drugs tests at the Beijing World Championships. Now Mwangi says that he's anxious to have his name cleared and has asked for 21 days leave. He's asked for the bribes to reduce athletes' doping bans. The Kenyan government's been accused of turning its back on rape victims of post-electoral violence of 2007 and 8. Human Rights Watch interviewed 170 women and alleged that many faced multiple attackers, some of whom were members of the security forces. Girls and women are still struggling with the physical and mental scars of their ordeal and have received little help. Last year, the government announced the creation of a multi-million euro restorative justice fund for victims, but it's not yet up and running. Researchers say that the stigma of sexual violence has left many women destitute and ostracised. France 24 has spoken to the young Chadian girl whose alleged gang rape sparked fatal protests in Jemina, in which one person was killed on Monday. Nine people have been arrested in connection to the case. 
The men accused of carrying out the attack last weekend are believed to have posted an online video of their crying victim. Nicholas Schumer has the story. Zuhura is the young woman whose story has shocked the Chadian nation. She was sexually assaulted earlier this month. They took me to a place I'd never seen before. They took my clothes off. They took pictures of me. They were having fun and laughing at me. Her attackers posted a video online of her naked and in tears. They told me not to say anything, otherwise they would do this again and put the pictures on social media. But when I got home, I told my parents. I just had to. Now, I just want justice. And I don't want this to happen ever again. Her case has repercussions for Chad's elite. Several young men have been arrested. One of them is the son of the foreign affairs minister. The others are the sons of generals. On Monday, many Chadians protested against the young woman's sexual assault. One demonstrator was shot dead by the police. The security forces involved in this case will be arrested and will face justice. After Zuhura's assault, President Idris Debi denounced an atrocious act and said those responsible would be punished. Well, as Nigeria and its allies continue to wage a regional offensive against Boko Haram's seven-year insurgency, authorities have been keen to push home the combat progress made over the last year. But the impact of the extremist war goes beyond the fighting. For some of the thousands of women kidnapped over the years, those lucky enough to return home often find that they then face another kind of battle. This is at the centre of a new report that's been released today, Tuesday. For more on this, I'm now joined by one of its authors, Kimiris Tugud. Kimiris, thanks very much for speaking to us. Now, what are some of these difficulties faced by returning captives of Boko Haram that you're so concerned about? Yes, thank you also for having us. Some of the complications that women are facing are related to stigma um, received by them and also the children that they return from captivity with that were born out of sexual violence. Many community members believe that women have been co-opted or the ideology of Boko Haram has spread to them. And therefore, they're very skeptical and very resistant to receive these women back into their communities. Uh, one thing that we noted is that community members uh, perceived that women and girls could eventually be accepted back into the community. However, that same uh, aspect of tolerance was not extended to the child. In the case of the child born out of sexual violence by Boko Haram, uh, community members expressed very little room for that child to coexist with their community, referencing the bad blood that the child shares with the Boko Haram insurgent. So what kind of support is currently in place to help uh, these young, these women and girls reintegrate back into their communities? There are a number of agencies, both uh, Nigerian institutions, state-based institutions such as the National Emergency Management Agency, the Borno State Emergency Management Agency, as well as international NGOs such as International Committee for the Red Cross, Save the Children, IOM, and UNICEF, who is our joint author and uh, uh, producer of this report, all in place working in the internally displaced camps in predominantly in Maiduguri, which is the capital of Borno State. However, what we are noticing, particularly with survivors, the women and girls, uh, is that there are only so few that have returned at this time. And the psychosocial support that is being provided to them by any number of those actors is not sufficient to the breadth and depth of the issues that we're actually seeing and the need that we know that is coming as the Nigerian military continues to reclaim territory from Boko Haram. Now, we were speaking a little earlier on, and you were saying that it's not just working with the women th themselves, it's also focusing on what can be done to help communities change their perception of these returning uh, victims of Boko Haram. What do you envisage that kind of support looking like? 
Uh, yes, you are absolutely right that the stigma that is being placed on the women and girls and the children is mostly coming from the community members themselves. What we noted in this report, together with UNICEF, the International Organization for Migration, and the Borno State Ministry for Women Affairs and Social Development, is that uh, community members are not receiving trauma healing and psychosocial support to the same degree that the women and girls who have survived sexual violence are. And therefore, what we proposed, and it was accepted and funded by the UK Department for International Development, DFID, is that a small-scale quick impact project is currently being implemented, again, with UNICEF and International Alert, to try to access the different community uh, members that are holding some of these quite extremely negative views and try to get them the support while they're still in the internally displaced camps before they move back to their host communities. However, we are a small organization um, and there's only so much that we can do and therefore we're trying to use this report to raise awareness and really stress the necessity for more actors to really look and focus their attention on these different community members that have survived their own trauma related to violence committed by Boko Haram that left them in the situation of displacement. So if we can target our support um, to everyone, including the communities... Kamaris, thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry to have to cut you off there, but that is unfortunately all the time that we have. Uh, thanks for joining us. Kamaris, too good there mm -hmm. discussing some of the problems faced by former captives of Boko Haram reintegrating back into their communities in thank Nigeria. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Paris time. Finish ahead of the message audio d'ailleurs ça a suicidé. Therefore he is dispatched. End of the speech. France 24. Everywhere.